So for example, this webcast, um, we hope to post up there on the website so you can view it uh, if you happen to miss one and, and for future webcasts as well. We've also got the InfraWorks 360 forum, autodesk.com slash InfraWorks 360 forum. And uh, this is a very active forum. We've got lots of users and our product team is awesome. They are so responsive and active in this forum, more than I've ever seen, I think, for any other product forum. So if you have a question about InfraWorks 360, you're getting stuck, you're wondering anything, go into, go into the forum and uh, ask your question and you'll, you're going to get an answer either from us or from one of the other users, which is even better in, in my opinion when we've got users helping each other out. We've also got our brand new idea station, which is a place for you to submit your ideas for how you think we should improve InfraWorks 360. And it's a really, it's a really great tool because it's not just about posting an idea and, and you're done with it. It is a, is a place where your ideas are successful if they gain lots of community support. So um, the best ideas get the most support and they're gonna have the highest probability of being implemented uh, by our product team. So definitely check out the idea station. Tell us and the community what ideas you have for improving the, the software and uh, build that community support so we can learn what, the, what are the absolute most important features we need to add based on the community at large. We need to cover this disclaimer. Um, from a legal perspective, we may talk about things that are considered preview features. We might even uh, let slip a couple of things that we're working on for future releases. We want you to understand that this is in no way a promise or guarantee that these features are going to absolutely definitely appear in the software. So make sure we're clear on that. And you'll see this disclaimer on all of our webcasts so that uh, you know we can speak freely about some of the preview features. So let's get into the material at hand. I'm going to uh, jump into what's new with InfraWorks 360. So the first topic I want to look at is some slight changes to naming and packaging. What used to be just plain InfraWorks now has uh, InfraWorks 360 with the LT added to it. So for, for a basic explanation, what used to be just plain InfraWorks is now InfraWorks 360 LT. This is your core product where you can aggregate data, sketch design, create storyboards, the core functions. And then um, this product, just like InfraWorks was, this product is also available with desktop subscription for uh, IDS Infrastructure Design Suite Premium and Ultimate, as well as Building Design Suite Ultimate. But it is an entitlement. And um, that's something I guess you need to understand as a change in, in Shockery or Dan feel free to chime in if I don't get part of this right, but instead of it just licensing with your network license of, of the suite, it's actually an entitlement that'll need to be, um, need to be offered through uh, your, your software manager through uh, accounts.autodesk.com. So there is a slight change there with licensing. And then of course, so, we've, go ahead. Eric, yeah, so this is Dan. Um, so. So first, as we go through this, uh, this is a, a webinar, and we're not able to open up the line. So if you have questions throughout the whole session, feel free to use the question panel to type in your questions, and we'll either do our best to get to the questions during the session or follow up afterwards. And then at the end, I think we might be able to open up questions. But please type in questions as we go through this, because we want this to be interactive. Um, and then you know, just one more point on that. It's think, think of it as entitlements where in Fork 360, LT is the, is the base entitlement, and then from there you can then go to Infox 360, and then the vertical applications, all entitlement, all entitlement based. So really simplifying the the offering and uh, the, the the packaging around that. So, but yeah, yeah, please type in questions as we go through this. Yeah, and I see we do have one question up there already. So people are finding the questions uh, questions yeah. panel. Awesome. Um, so yeah, so we've got InfraWorks 360 LT, and then the full-blown product is InfraWorks 360. And with that, you get all the core features plus the ability to add on the vertical applications, drainage, bridge, and road. We've got Model Builder included with that. We've got the collaboration capabilities, the ability to use some of the simulation and analysis uh, services. So that's the, the whole deal. Now, as, as Dan was saying, We've got an improved installation and trial experience. So 
it's now all one installation. No serial numbers or product keys, you just install the product and what you get is determined when you log into the product. So whether you've just got InfraWorks 360 LT or any combination of the verticals along with InfraWorks 360, that all gets uh, managed as entitlements and when you log in the magic happens. Um, as far as the trial goes, it's a fully functional 30-day trial so you get to see all of the different uh, vertical applications as well as full InfraWorks 360 for 30 days and if that trial expires it actually goes into what's called presenter mode so uh, you, you can see uh, I've got a screen capture of presenter mode on my screen now where it's a it's a minimal user interface but you can still open uh, you can still open models and um, you know look at them measure them but you can't make changes or publish changes back to uh, back to the models another change I want to I want to highlight is Going back to InfraWorks 360 LT, there's actually a capability there that wasn't there for just InfraWorks in the, in the previous version. And with InfraWorks 360 LT, you can actually access models in the cloud. You can't, um, you can't publish changes to them, but if somebody's invited you to a group and, you're, and you have the LT product, you can actually go up to uh, the InfraWorks 360 cloud service and download that model, which is something you couldn't do with uh, with InfraWorks, uh, the, the prior version. All right, so let's get into some specific updates. Model Builder is now a fully supported pr production version. It has graduated. And oh, by the way, um, some of the things I'm going to tell you about are brand, brand new in this 2016, I'm not supposed to call it that, in this latest spring release. Um, but we've also got some incremental releases earlier in the year that I've included as well because I'm, I realize that some of you may have may not be totally up to speed when uh, you know we're so hard at work adding to InfraWorks 360 throughout the year. I realize that not everyone may know about all of the features that were added in the past um, eight eight months or so. So some of these are actually maybe one release old. Um, Model Builder, though, getting back to that. Um, Fully, fully supported feature now, um, global content. We have the ability now to, uh, to bring in high quality aerial photos and terrain data. And one of, the, one of the new functional areas is the ability to have polygonal shaped uh, areas of interest and also defining uh, areas of interest by shapefile. So let me actually demonstrate what I'm talking about there. I'm gonna go into the product live demonstration on a webcast so I'm going without a net here and uh, we can open model builder and now we have some extra capabilities as to how we define the area that that we're using so for example I'm gonna type in Ashland Virginia because that's close to where I live and you know before I could do a, a, a rectangle that was all I had uh, the capability to do but now I've got a polygon and if I wanted to do a project, let's say on this Route 54 road corridor, I could draw a shape and, and capture just what I need as far as that, that corridor goes. In the past, if you, if you had to do a corridor shape like this, you had to do a big giant rectangle. And sometimes you didn't get all the, all the length that you needed because of this uh, 200 square kilometer maximum. Well, now you can uh, max that out even more. And then if that's not good enough for you, we can even go out and grab a shape file. So if I go to a shape file that has shapes in it that I can, uh, ac I can access, for example, this is all the town and city boundaries in the state of Virginia. So I can zoom back into the town of Ashland, and you can see the, uh, the town boundary there. I can just click on that, and that becomes the area of interest for my new model. So that's a pretty cool feature as well. And then if I switch back to my model, you can see what... Uh, you can see what you get. It's an exact carve out of the shape that I grabbed from the uh, from the shape file. So some interesting capabilities there with Model Builder. Some usability improvements. Um, again, the the new InfraWorks Home is I think one release old, but uh, still still big news. We've completely changed the layout of of this experience. We've got these large tiles. We've got the ability to filter based on group or things you've recently opened. You can even search through all your models. I know for me, you know, the longer you use InfraWorks 360 and the more groups you get, uh, you get invited to, this tends to get to be a pretty numerous list of models. 
So this ability to search models and filter has been priceless for me because I'm probably invited to several hundred models now um, with all the different groups that I'm a member of. So it doesn't take long for them to, to add up and having this ability to manage through them is, is very useful. We've got a couple of new formats that we support, Wavefront, OBJ, and Collada DAE. And we've also got Screencast built right into the product now, which is helpful if you want to, I don't know, it's helpful for a lot of different things. If you want to do some internal training and capture a video of a, of a workflow, or if someone is supporting you and you want to show them what's going on, it's uh, Screencast is just a great general tool to have. Highly recommend checking it out. Improved collaboration. Um, we can now store models on a network drive. I know this is a really big deal for a lot of folks. In, uh, in the past, we couldn't do this. And you know the reason, um, again, Dan Chakri chime in if I'm wrong on this, but we, we held it back on this at first because we didn't want to sacrifice any performance and uh, with you having to pull data across the network. But now we store the tile cache locally so this, the performance is maintained because the files are kept local and um, you can actually control the location of where that tile cache is stored if I go into if I go into application options on this very front tab called general you can see the tile cache folder right here um, so something that we've uh, enhanced on the product that you know allows you to collaborate better in your in your office environment We've also improved web collaboration, um, a new web viewer, which is really cool. You definitely have to check it out. Next time you publish a model, you'll, if you're in the new version of the software, in the email that you get, you'll get a link to your uh, web viewer of the model, as long as you check that box when you, uh, when you publish it. And uh, speaking of the, the checkbox, the, the whole publishing and syncing dialogue has been updated and improved as well. So you'll find that experience to be smoother. So definitely want to check that out when you get a chance. Some modeling enhancements. I know for some folks it's really, really big news that we can now theme point clouds by intensity and I think elevation as well. But the one that I've heard a lot of uh, requests for has been intensity. We want to be able to see that in the model and we can do it now. We also have the, the ability to support Collada models with moving parts. And this is one you just have to demonstrate because it's fun. Um, I don't know how well this will come across on the GoToWebinar, but if you if you have the latest version of InfraWorks 360 installed and you create a piece of city furniture and you can go in and just type the word turbine here, we've got a sample uh, animated turbine. You can see the little blue play icon next to it. I'll select that style, double click in the model, and now I've got a, a moving turbine in the model. And if for whatever reason, if you find that the, the turbine doesn't move, remember to go into your visual effects settings and turn on animation. So you might drop it in and, and think, wow, this, this isn't working. You may just have to turn on animation and that turns on the clouds in the water and all that uh, cool animation that we have in the product. We've also got improved uh, Revit interoperability where um, you know, we're doing better with maintaining building materials and just the whole experience of, uh, of bringing Revit models in has improved really on every release. All right, well, I see lots of questions uh, popping in here and uh, seems so like you've got it. Eric, one question I want you to, you know, just if you can take. Sure. In the, model, in the model builder, do we have to pay for the high quality terrain and aerial imagery? That is, uh, the answer to that is no. Um, you can actually change the quality of the imagery. Um, I don't. I think I'll be able to show you where that is here. Let me go into um, data sources. I know this this model's been through a couple of different iterations, so this may not work. So you can go in, if you've built a model with Model Builder, you can go to where I am now in the configuration dialog, and, and I guess it's a default that it uses this level 17 re resolution. You can scroll down to the bottom of the list and go up even higher with, uh, with the resolution. But be, be forewarned, it's going to take, if you go down here and pick 19, you're going to get great imagery, but you are going to wait 
uh, a few minutes for it to download and process. And it doesn't cost you anything extra to get that, but just know that, uh, that you're going to have to wait a little bit for that data to come down, but you'll get some really nice looking imagery from there. Great question. Any other uh, burning questions that uh, we should talk about? Eric, this is Dan. Uh, there's several questions uh, related to Infox 360 LT and then Infox 360. So, so just touching on that again, because there's quite a few questions related to it. So within the suites now, so IDS suite, BDS suite, as a subscription entitlement, you now have Infox 360 LT. So for those that have had Infox in the past, think of that as um, effectively the same capability as what InfraWorks was in the suite in prior versions. So with the 2016, our, our most recent release, that uh, change has taken place uh, and also the licensing associated with it. So, so you will now be entitled to Infox 360 LT on subscription and then from there, if you then purchase the entitlements to Infox 360, it's, it's just an entitlement change, and which means you don't have to uninstall or reinstall the software. It, it's, it's just um, cascades off the same licensing, and then when we get into the vertical applications, the same, the same thing. So, uh, so I just wanted to try to clarify that, that piece of it, and this, and this has all happened in, a, in our most recent release of the suite. All right, thanks, Dan. So with that, I think I'm going <clears> to <throat> move on to the next topic, which is uh, improved data exchange between InfraWorks 360 and Civil 3D. So if you happen to be on subscription with Civil 3D in, in the 2015 release, there was a productivity pack that was that came out. And now we've actually gone in and integrated that right into the Civil 3D 2016 interface. So if I bring up... Uh, if I bring up Civil 3D, you'll see on the insert uh, on the insert ribbon, <clears throat> there's now an InfraWorks 360 section, and we have open InfraWorks 360 model there. So you no longer have to go into the toolbox to get it. Aside from that, if you're familiar with how the toolbox tool functioned, I think it's pretty much the same tool. So if you know how to use that tool, you already know how to use the functionality for InfraWorks 360. So I wanted to just show you quickly how that works. Um, if I go over to my industrial park model that I have over here, I've got this, um, this kind of main road that runs through the whole industrial park. And um, what I want to do is, you know, the, the, the scenario is I've laid this road out in InfraWorks 360. You know, I've, I've, um, I've got a basic design of it. You know, it's, it's, but it's actually more than basics because if you know anything about the roadway design tools, they're, they're based on uh, horizontal geometry that, you know, horizontal curves and spirals, vertical curves. So it's pretty good solid engineering design. <clears throat> but if I'm ready to move this road now into Civil 3D and start, you know, either tweaking the design further or starting to label it and plan and profile and work towards construction documents, I may want to move this move this road over to Civil 3D. And what's great is that I can now just open that model right from Civil 3D. I can browse out, click the SQLite file that represents the InfraWorks model. It's going to recognize what coordinate system that's in. If it if it does if if my current drawing in Civil 3D doesn't have a coordinate system assigned, it'll it'll warn me and and kind of make me pick one. Um, it's just a great tool. It's it's been very well designed, and we've thought thought of everything. And I say we, and I mean the, our product team has just done a great job of designing this tool, right down to this feature where I can select an area, and all this cool stuff happens. Um, it automatically turns on the the Bing imagery in the background. It zooms me into where my InfraWorks model is located, and it shows me a bounding box. See the white box there? This is the entire extent of my InfraWorks model. And I can zoom in and say, you know, I really don't want the whole thing. I just want to bring in what's in this little box. So I can, uh, you know, refine the area that I want to want to open from my InfraWorks model. Now it's uh, you know thinking and processing. Another thing I can do is I may not want to bring everything in. <clears throat> so I can go either load up a pre-designed XML file that kind of chooses the way I want to bring things in. It also has that XML file also has settings in it as to what styles to use for different objects. And uh, 
on top of that, I can refine even further and say, you know what, all I want to bring in is this one design road. It's called design road three, and that's the one that I just pointed out in the InfraWorks model. So I'll just bring in that one road. I'll go ahead and open model. It's bringing in one object, and if I zoom into my drawing, you'll see the alignment here. The important thing to realize is it didn't just bring in the alignment. It also brought in, let me turn off this imagery, it also brought in the profile. So just as I was saying a moment ago, I can, I can continue my detailed design. I'll go ahead and create a profile view for this road number three. And you'll notice that the design profile is there. And this just isn't a pretty picture of a profile, it's actually got a vertical curve and and uh, you know, if I wanted to, I could add labels to this or add some PVIs and really start, uh, really start getting into the detailed design aspects of it. So that's the idea with this interoperability: is I can just directly open the model and uh, and do my thing in Civil 3D. I don't lose anything. And then we have the same thing going the other way. We can pull uh, data from Civil 3D into InfraWorks 360 um, and and have a good representation of that Civil 3D model. So. You know, the scenario there is I've used InfraWorks 360 to do my early design, went into Civil 3D, and now did all my detailed design and documentation, and now I'm ready to visualize that design in the, con in the great context. And that's one of the things that InfraWorks is so awesome at is building that really big context, up to 200 square kilometers of context for you to show your design in. So a road or a site, or a bridge, it means so much more when it's surrounded by all that context than it than it means when it's just standing by itself. And um, you know, we've got support for roads uh, as well as pipe networks and bridge designs to go to go with that as well. So that's some of the stuff about um, Civil 3D and InfraWorks interoperability. I don't want to get too far into that because uh, we've got a webcast on that coming up in the near future. So I don't want to steal too much thunder from that. So move on uh, oh and the one thing I didn't uh, I didn't mention just for one second getting back to interoperability is I actually have pretty good connectivity between civil 3d and infraworks so if I make a change to my civil 3d model it's just a matter of updating the data source in infraworks and that uh, that that view or that representation of the civil 3d design will actually update so I don't have to re-import it or redo anything I can uh, kind of keep a live reference of it going so any, uh, before I move into roadway design, any questions that we need to air out? Anything I missed, Dan or Shocker? There's a bunch of questions there. Uh, no, I don't think so. There's a bunch of questions we're trying, we're trying to keep up with them, but I don't, I don't think there's any, anything specific to what you covered. So, but keep, okay. keep the questions coming. So. Yeah, awesome. Loving all the interaction. Yeah. Yeah. All right, moving into roadway design. So uh, we've got some cool um, improvements here. We can, with one click, convert a GIS road or whatever you want, uh, uh, sketch road, spline road. We've got a bunch of different names for these, but we can convert them to design roads now with one command. Um, we've got some smarter profile uh, editing, and we've got the ability to, uh, to get some numbers for cut and fill from, uh, from here as well. And um, we've also got some improvements to intersection design. Um, where we can uh, we can control the median whether the median is broken or not on a on a divided highway, we can even control have very specific control on uh, the markings the paint markings in the intersections. So I definitely want to show you some of that. So I'm going to jump back into InfraWorks 360. And I'll open my Ashland model again. <clears throat> So um, the first thing I'll show you is the convert to design road. So, you know, let's say I want to design this intersection, and this road here happens to be a design road. You can see the asset card popped up. But this, the one that it tees into is an existing road. It came in with Model Builder. So um, it doesn't have the asset card. It doesn't have the same uh, editing gizmos and things like that. So, and the more, more important thing is if I want to design this intersection, I don't have access to the intersection tools because I'm not dealing with two design roads intersecting each other. 
So in past releases, this was kind of a pain because you'd have to basically redraw this road as a design road. Well, now we can just right-click it, convert to design road, and we're good to go. Now with this one, it just happens to miss the intersection a little bit. So if I just pull that over, it's going to create that intersection. You can see all, right off the bat, it's different with the with the yield lines and that sort of thing. I've got uh, now I've got the ability to make access of some of the um, some of the intersection design tools. To show off the first cool feature of intersection design, I'm going to change the style of this road. So I'll go into the style palette and I want to choose a road style that has a, a median in it. So I like the ones with the medians and the trees in them. So let's do the fall hardwood one. And I'm just going to drag and drop that style onto my road. So now you can see that median in the center. Something that we couldn't do before that we can do now is I can go into the lane marking section and I've got this new uh, feature called traffic turn to. Right now it's set to left and right, but if I were to switch this to right only, it closes up the median. And now I don't have the ability anymore to make a left turn. So that's pretty cool. And then uh, another feature that has been added, if I click click the intersection, oh, I've got, I've got to go back to geometry mode. I was wondering what was going on there. If I click in this area, I can change the, uh, the lo locations of the yield lines. Yeah, and I'm not sure why it's not giving me that, uh, maybe because I changed the, um, maybe because I changed the uh, configuration. Let me go back here and say both directions. Come on, Eric, you can figure this out. Yeah, I don't know why, but um, it's not giving me access to change the yield lines. Typically, I get a, I get a gizmo right here on the yield line that lets me uh, move that around. So let me see if I can create another intersection and show you that real quick. Just do a real quick design road. Part of the reason could, Eric, part of the reason could be because you have two design, two junctions too close by. Could be. Yep. Interesting. Not sure what uh, what's going on there, but yeah, you can control that's the. Not a design junction. Oh, did I use the wrong tool? No, it, yeah, uh, that's no, no, uh, that's not a design junction at the moment. That's uh... Interesting. Okay. Well, I'm not sure what uh, what I got myself twisted into there, but um, one of the features is, though, however, you can uh, you can move these yield lines around, which is uh, something I've been personally been hoping for for a while that we have access to. We also support left-hand driving, so our our folks uh, over in Europe and in other countries can uh, can deal with the left-hand side of the road driving. So moving on to bridge design. Um, we've got some really big changes here as well. I, I think the biggest news is just the content that's available with the girders. But, um, you know, we've got these in-canvas tooltips. We've got uh, direct control of individual girders and the ability to do bridge quantities. And probably my favorite feature is, uh, I think this road has a bridge on it, is that I can select a bridge and right-click and toggle the transparency of the deck. So if you've ever worked on bridges, one of the um, one of the tougher things to do, especially on one of these lower bridges, is you're trying to get up under here and look at the girders and make some changes. And um, there's not a whole lot of space to do that. So now we can toggle that deck transparency. And we can work right from, from top side here. And from here I can click a girder. Uh, girder group in this case, and if I wanted to, I could change the, uh, the 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 shape of this girder, or I can even click an individual girder and change its its um, its, its designation, and uh, which leads me to the next feature, which is this extensive catalog of girders. If I scroll down through here, it just goes and goes and goes. There are so many different shapes to pick from, and uh, all I have to do, <clears throat> I'm just going to grab one, no matter how silly it may be. There's an American box beam. And just like that, I can grab a girder and change it to a different change it to a different shape. 
So instead of uh, an I-beam shape, we now have a box girder shape, and uh, and just like that. So the news with bridge is the uh, toggle deck toggle deck transparency option, and the really big news is this extensive catalog of of structural shapes that we can access. As far as drainage design for InfraWorks 360 goes, uh, again, some of this happened throughout throughout the past eight months or so, but we can now automatically delineate watersheds. Um, we've also got built-in analytics for sizing culverts and calculating peak flows. And uh, we've even got in-canvas analysis um, that you can see there in the bottom right corner where you can literally just click on a culvert and see um, you know, how it's performing based on the flows that have been calculated. So again, this is stuff that I just I just have to show you. So I'm going to go. I'm going to switch proposals here. I've got one called drainage, and uh, we're looking at the same bridge again. And you know, let's say instead of instead of putting a bridge here, we want to assess whether we can get away with just a culvert. Uh, of course, the big question is, can I pass the flow that I need to pass? You can kind of make out a uh, a low low lying area here, maybe a little stream running through this area, but it's, it's a definite depression. So I can just simply uh, wipe out this bridge. And we want to take a look at, you know, what kind of flows am I getting in this area? So I can go to my, uh, my drainage tools and just simply have it create watersheds. And of course, this, uh, this is going to cost you some cloud credits, but I can pick a road and I'll adjust my settings to be as fine as they can be. And then when I press enter, it'll submit that to the cloud. It'll submit that request for analysis to the cloud. And it happens pretty quickly. Um, even though it's going up to the cloud and, and running the analysis, um, usually I'm, I'm getting results back uh, in, um, in a short enough time that I don't feel like getting up and leaving my computer. So we'll see how it uh, we'll see how it does this time around. If it does take a little too long and I get impatient, then uh, I've got another proposal going. But hey, look at that! I'm not even done talking about it, and I've already got results. So there's my uh, my watersheds that it delineated, as well as some of these black lines represent streams that it delineated. So it gets even better. I can uh, I can right click this road now, and uh, I have to be in edit mode as you saw. I can right click and say add culverts. And it's going to look at everywhere the streams cross the road. And it'll also analyze where the toes of the slopes are and the location of the streams. And it'll place the culvert inlet and outlet based on those locations. So it's, uh, it's pretty smart spatially about that. So it's got spatial intelligence. It knows where that culvert should go. And then I can even go one step further. If I go into this watershed, all I did was click on the watershed. Right now, the default hydrology method is user defined, but let's say I want to use something like the rational method. Now I'm going to I'm going to make up some numbers here, and let's say our runoff coefficient is 0.4, and our rainfall intensity I'm just going to round it off to five inches per hour. That gives me a calculated Q100 value of 91 cfs. Pretty cool, right? <clears throat> well, check this out. Uh, all I'm going to do is click on this culvert. And because there's a feature turned on that says, go ahead and automatically analyze this culvert, it automatically sized it up to pass that, that calculated flow. You can see the flow we were just looking at right here, that 91.066. And you know, if I were to go in and adjust some numbers for the watershed, maybe I decide that, you know, that, that C value is a little low, or I want to analyze it for post-development conditions, put some pavement in here, and now my C, C factor is up to 0.85. I can rerun that <clears throat> and figure out what my culvert is going to need to be. And I think that's, uh, that's really exciting, the amount of work and heavy lifting that you can do with very little effort as far as analyzing the stream crossing and figuring out what size culvert needs to be there. So we've also got some pretty exciting things. Whoa. I just had PowerPoint crash on me. Hold on just a second. <clears throat> you know, you don't worry about PowerPoint crashing. You worry about the uh, you worry about the software. So let's see. And you've been on such a roll, Eric. I tell you, 
Yeah. I'm getting, uh, this is a new one. This isn't one I had to deal with before. So let's see. Might be a good time to take a question while I'm finding my PowerPoint. If you got any hot ones. Um, if there's any hot ones, just a lot of, a lot of just, uh, just general, you know, questions as you've been going through it, Eric. All right. I'm almost back up here, so. Let me just find out where my slide is that I left off on. <clears throat> Bear with me, folks. I'm almost there. So we just talked about watershed analysis. I wanted to take a look at pavement drainage as well. So um, I don't know. This this is really just pretty much mind blowing to me. So I'll just jump right in and show you. Um, I've got my road here. I can select it, right click it, and add pavement drainage. What's new in this latest update is you, you didn't really have all these options before. I can control the maximum spacing. I can choose what type and size uh, I need for, for my inlets and manholes and pipelines. And while I'm here, I can talk about also one of the really big pieces of news for, for our latest developments in the product is an extensive library of structures. So here you can see this inlet library. We've got a, a manhole library as well. You know, these are um, practical, realistic um, structures that you can, that you can use. So I can choose what my defaults are for inlets and manholes, and then I basically just press enter, and I get InfraWorks really good educated guess on where I'm going to want pipes and structures based on my spacing, based on you know where the low points are, and if I zoom in here, you can see the inlets and manholes that have been added to, uh, to the model. And if I go underground, you can see that they've also been connected up with, uh, with pipes. Of course, you may, you're going to want to make changes to this, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming. In fact, if I look at this area here, we can see that uh, maybe InfraWorks overdid it a little bit in the intersection. So, um, you know, I can go in here and just do some basic changes, delete some things. Um, I can go underground and check out the pipes and see if there are any pipes going to nowhere and take care of those. So it's very simple, intuitive editing. It's not anything that... Uh, it takes a lot of work or effort to, to figure out. And then maybe one of my absolute favorite features in this release is the ability to analyze inlets. Um, if you notice, I've selected the inlet. I've got this inlet asset card, which is extensive in the information that it shares. And it even calculates tributary and spread. So I don't know if you can see the blue outline, but this is a visual representation of how the inlet's performing as far as spread and and bypass, and I can even go and hover over with my cursor and see a depth value and a spread value uh, that I can, uh, that gives me a really good idea how this inlet is performing. So just an amazing amount of, of power and speed in, uh, in laying out that initial um, pavement drainage system for a road. And then of course, I can take this using the Civil 3D interoperability that I showed you earlier in the presentation, and I can dump that over into Civil 3D and continue with, you know, profiling and editing and labeling and turn this into a, a full, uh, finished, detailed design for my storm system with construction documents in the works. So the two products together, InfraWorks 360 and Civil 3D, the synergy between them is now just amazing uh, as far as going back and forth. You're not losing work. Um, you're able to just... Uh, move from one product to the other and do what you need to do in the tool that best suits the task. So I uh, just can't say enough about where we've come with that. And again, I, I say we like uh, I should take the credit. Our product team has just been amazing with, uh, with the advancements that they've made. Draining, drainage analysis, we've got uh, the reporting tools. Um, one other thing I wanted to show you that I just, just now thought of is I can right click in here. Actually, this is not a right click menu. It's in the 
it's in the tools themselves. And what I'm looking for is the quantities. There we go. So I can hit quantities for a road and uh, check that out. I've got culverts, inlets, a full uh, accounting of uh, pipelines, and right down to, uh, you know, I've, I've used the same inlets and manholes for the entire system, but if I had gone out and swapped out some of those, then I would have uh, numbers for those as well. So um, that's some pretty powerful analysis as well. Let me show you the uh, presentation and not the background. So that actually covers the, the content that I wanted to cover as far as what's new in the product. One, I'll, talk, I'll talk a little bit about what I didn't cover. I didn't talk about any of the preview features at all. Everything I showed you um, in this presentation is available and production ready in the product right now. This isn't something that we have you know, disclaimers attached to with the, like we do with the previews, which say you know, don't use this in production, and we may or may not really ever include this in the product. The stuff that I showed you, you can use right now today on a project. So um, there's lots more to talk about with the preview features, and we're going to be covering some of that in upcoming webcasts. But I do want to clarify, if you're wondering, like, well, why didn't Eric talk about this or that? It may be because it's a preview feature, and, and I kind of wanted to stick to um, the stuff that is production ready in this, in this webcast. So Dan and Shakri, any... Uh, any questions, comments, anything you'd like to add to uh, to what I've done here? So far, going good, and uh, we're trying to keep. Nah, nothing, nothing to add. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll add one thing, Eric. Uh, the I mean, you kind of touched on it. The so with the drainage capability. So you know, Eric did a great job showing the the layout and how we've integrated the analytics. And there's another aspect of that, a little bit of preview, but I want to just touch on it, and that relates to that content that he has shown. So there's a, an effort underway. There's a, a labs project that's called Chameleon that is, think of it as our next generation uh, content authoring environment. And so that project is on labs. But when we're, when we're talking about this interoperability between InfoWorks and Civil 3D, the content, it's the exact same content that we're leveraging uh, in, in both InfoWorks and Civil 3D. So any of the properties that you're uh, evaluating, looking at InfoWorks, those are fully fully available in Civil 3D. And as we look forward, there'll be an environment for authoring that content, and you can see a preview of that on, uh, as part of that Chameleon project. So a lot of effort really to bring that uh, solution together, unify the creation of content and that and that interoperability. So I just want to just just touch on that. All right, thanks. I'm looking down through uh, the questions, and I'm really uh, really excited with the number of questions that we had. That's great interaction from uh, from the folks who participated here. I see a question here that says. He also gave us some ideas on what. Oh, go ahead. No, no, you go, Shakri. I was saying that it actually gives uh, quite the questions give pretty good idea about where we can offer more uh, webcasts or webinars in the future. Right. I see a question here on um, importing a watershed. So. Um, I don't believe we can, and what I'm looking at here is, you know, if we were to import, let's say, a, a shape file or something, um, I don't believe that there's a way to bring a shape in and, and call it a watershed. I think the only way to delineate a watershed, and correct me if I'm wrong, Dan or Shakri, is to, ha is to have it generated with the watershed, uh, create watersheds functionality. That's correct. If you want to bring it as a watershed with all the data attributes and, uh, and be uh, accessible for uh, culvert design and other kind of things. The, the only way is as Eric said. However, you can actually bring those uh, watershed shape files if you have an external database and you can import them as a uh, what we call as a uh, coverage areas. Uh, there are multiple ways you can bring those vector data into InfoWorks and you can stylize them uh, appropriately with the, with the data coming in. Uh, the functionality wouldn't be the same as what you would expect with a 
infrared analyzed watershed areas. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I do have a couple of a uh, couple of slides here. I think I'm down to the to the near end. And I want to make sure I cover these last couple of slides. And maybe if we still have a minute or two, I'll, I'll pause for any final questions. But I just wanted to remind everyone: don't forget, we've got these webcasts are just going to get better from here. Um, next one is inside InfraWorks 360 Road Design. That's going to be on May 6th. Watch for the registration announcement with the link. Check your check the community site. The URL is up there, so keep checking back there for that for that information. Also, keep your eye on Facebook and Twitter because we uh, for this for this particular webcast we we kind of did a grassroots promotional thing. I mean, this is community, so we're trying to use the channels that that you guys use. Um, so watch those areas for information on uh, how to register for the next webcast. And I was thinking I had another slide here, but I wanted yeah. to uh, one last thing. I just wanted to remind everyone to visit the uh, the community site, check back on that regularly, and also check in on the forum. Um, you'll find lots of good information on the forum from uh, from our users and from our product team as well. And then we also have the idea station. So if you've got that thing that you've just you think InfraWorks would be the bomb, if we could just add this one feature, go to the idea station and and put it up there. And the way you get there is uh, it's autodesk.com slash InfraWorks 360 forum. And, um, and then you'll see the link for the idea station there. Go ahead, Dan. Yeah, I was going to say I see a, uh, several people will follow up individually on these, but I do see several questions related to customization. So customization of the some of the rules like in the draining cap capability, how that was happening also on the roadside. And I think that would probably make a great webcast, which we didn't have. I don't think you had that, that in your top five list, but I think uh, oh. I think that would make a, a, a great webcast uh, that we can that we can try to get in the next uh, in the next half a dozen sessions. Agreed. So, uh, we'll have to add that one to the list for sure. Yeah, yeah. just customization yeah. in general. You thinking? Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, I think uh, I think we can wrap up a few minutes early if uh, if no one else has anything. Thanks everyone for attending and uh, keep watching for uh, links for the next webcast and for, for the ones that follow. Have a great day.